is what they say about the best laid plans. It is just far too cold out there to get anything done outside today. And snow's already starting to come down from the sky. That is my cat in the corner there. Um, anyway, I guess I'm gonna do indoor stuff today. This little guy always wants to be my helper. This is Snickerdoodle, and he is one of my two main coon cats. And he's both affectionate and playful. And he'll be uh, possibly spending some time in the camper with me. I don't know how he's gonna feel about that, but we'll find out. is that today will be electrical day in this camper at last and I know I've talked about this multiple times but today I am determined to try to make this happen so I have a bunch of supplies in this basket here and I figured I would take them out and show you what they are and then I will show you how I'm gonna put these into action all right so first I have these are my outlets they're very basic standard outlets there are multiple places to put the wires on them. There are the side screw ones, and then there are the posts in the back. And from what I have learned, the posts are probably the best bet to wire them to. So that's what I'm gonna end up doing. So I have, I have four of these. I don't know if I will put in four outlets, but I will have the opportunity to do that and the supplies to do that. So that's what my goal is. This other one doesn't want to come out. Anyway, let me see if I can get it to come loose. There we go. All right, so I have four outlets. They were really, really inexpensive. They were less than a dollar each, I think. So it was totally worth it to get four of them because I think I will probably end up using them. So I have two of these outlet boxes and these particular type of outlet boxes they're metal and because they're metal they need to be screwed into a stud because they're pretty heavy so these ones both of them are going to go in next to the breaker box because these will have these will have outlets in them but obviously they're outlet boxes and one of them will be for each breaker. So one of them will have access for the refrigerator, which is in the same cabinet as the, um, the refrigerator, the back of it anyway, is in the same cabinet as the breaker box. So it will be able to be plugged in in the back through this. And then there'll be a secondary plug in there for whatever I need. And then the other one, will be in there so that when I start implementing a battery system in here that I will have a place for a converter to plug into and that it's usually really good to have something like that near the breaker box. So that's why I have two of them so that they'll each have a purpose and they'll each be back there. And the one that's going to be for the converter box will probably also have a plug that goes along to a, um, a charging station. Now, let me see if I can find, I believe I brought the charging station into the camper. Let me see if I can find it. Just a sec. All right, so this is the charging station that I got. And it, as you can see, it has two outlets plus three USB plugs. It goes through the wall and I am going to put it on the wall next to where uh, the bed and the benches are. And this plugs in on the other side. So I am going to run the cord through the closet, which is not very big, and it will go into the back where the, uh, the, the breaker box is and it will plug into one of these. And so then I will have access to both outlets and USB outlets right here in the, the main area of the camper and won't have to wire in a permanent electrical socket for that. So this is portable if I ever want to move it, although I will be putting a hole in the wall as you can see to use it. So I'm not sure if I am going to put it down. See, I have a couple of options. So it's going to be plugged in in the cabinet over there. So I was thinking 
I could either have it up here. See, there's this hole in the wall. And I was thinking that maybe I'll just expand that little hole that's already existing in the wall anyway and put it right there. So that was my master plan. I don't know if that's what I'll end up doing, but we'll find out. And then my other plan is down here. And now this is part of the storage box. And this is right next to where the wheel well is underneath. So I have to make up my mind what to do with that. There is a, um, an area that has storage next to that and I might wire it into there. Or I could wire it in right underneath the main back lounge here. And I haven't really decided which place to put a regular outlet yet. So I think that this will go where that hole is in the wall. And then I'm getting ahead of myself with the outlets. So I have two plastic outlet boxes. So if you see, these are plastic. And these outlet boxes don't need a stud because they're very, very lightweight. And on top of being lightweight, they have this really cool feature. I don't know if you can see on camera. See these little tabs back here? When you plug these, I mean when you plug them in, when you screw these into the, wherever you're going to screw them into, in my case it's going to be in these storage areas. Um, when you screw these in, these tabs come up and as they come up, they offer they offer protection, as you can see, to keep it from falling out so it stays put. And so they end up being just like a little anchor and it's really convenient. So these are what I'm going to use for the other areas that I'm going to put outlets in because it just makes the most sense. And those obviously will go with the other two. So these just fit right in here and they'll just screw in with the screws that came with them. And then, of course, if you have outlet boxes, you should cover them and not leave all those wires exposed. So I have some outlet covers. These were very, very cheap. I think they were like 30 cents each. And these just screw right on, on the top of each of these. And uh, they came, each of them came with a little screw that goes in there. So I've got, I've got them in this basket somewhere. And in this basket also are some wire nuts because this makes connections much better and it's much safer than just using electrical tape. However, I do have not one but two rolls of electrical tape because extra security is never a bad thing. And in here I also have a new breaker for the box that I am going to open up in a little while and we'll see if this is the right breaker or not because I'm not exactly positive. I just took a chance at the store. Part of me wanted to buy two different ones and just return the bad one and, or the wrong one and I didn't do that. So hopefully I don't regret that decision. We'll find out. And then in here I also have some Romex. And Romex is electrical cable. So this is a 14-2, which is a, a pretty heavy duty Romex. And I don't know if you can see on camera, it has three wires in it. There'll be a black wire and a white wire, and then the ground wire, which is bare copper. So those three wires are what you are you will be, well, what I will be wiring into all of these and into the breaker box and running through the camper. Since the camper is not that big, I didn't buy a whole lot of Romex. So I have, I think I have a total of 50 feet of it. If I need more, I can always go get some, but it is kind of pricey. So I didn't want to overbuy any of that. In addition to all of that, I got a new razor knife because I don't have a really good razor knife anymore. I Mine is old and beat up and it was time to replace it. So this, this will bring up the razor and bring it down again. And then this is just a lock to open it up. And you see the razor storage is inside. So you take the razor out, you load it up in the other side, you just click it down and then it's good to go. So I have that. And then I have this handy dandy tool. Now this tool here allows you to strip wires, to cut wires, 
and to crimp wires. So this is going to come in a very, very handy as I'm wiring this camper. So this was an essential tool to have. This is probably, actually I don't know if I've ever had a blue one before this one, but there's a, there's a lot of options in it, as you can see. It's a really, really neat tool and all of the all of the areas are marked with which gauge wire you use them with and it's really it's really convenient and then I got a bus bar because I wasn't sure how the ground is gonna look in that in that breaker box so if I needed another one I figured it was best to have one on on hand and if I don't end up needing it it's not like I can't bring it back to the store so I've got that as well and that well, other than that, there's only the, the little screws that go with the outlet covers. And that is what's in my, my electric box. So, I guess it's time to get started and figure this whole deal out. So, if you don't check your breaker box before you go to the store and you have an existing breaker box in your camper and you want to add another breaker to it, you're probably making a mistake. You should always go look in your breaker box, see what your breaker looks like, and maybe even remove it and bring it to the store with you so that you can match it up. I didn't do that. So this is what happens. I have this little breaker here because I looked at breaker boxes in the store and this is what went in them. So I figured, well, that's probably just fine. However, Here's my breaker box. And as you can see, these are two very different size breakers. See this white wire, white wire at the top? This white wire is so tight against that second, the second place for breakers that it, uh, it's, it's unusable. I can't add another breaker because it's just so tight in there, there's no space. So I'm gonna have to rewire this anyway and uh, so I've got a project ahead of me. I have just been trying very hard to get this breaker out of this box back here and I cannot get that breaker out. So I am just gonna have to wing it when I go to the store and I am gonna have to just try to match it up somehow. I'm gonna bring the cover to the box so maybe that'll help. I don't know, I'm gonna maybe do some research online and see if I can find out some information on the breaker size. So, wish me luck. So one thing I'm utilizing here, and it's gonna make my life so much easier, is this. If you notice this light right here, looks like a standard light bulb, and it actually is a rechargeable light bulb. So it has this little, this little holder that you can hang just about anywhere. I'm gonna eventually put a hook in the ceiling here, probably somewhere, but in addition to that, it actually will screw into a standard light socket and you don't have to worry about having to, uh, having to have power in order to use it. And they recharge just by being plugged into a socket when there is power. So they're really, really convenient. So I just wanted to share that. So that is making it much easier when looking at all of this electrical stuff to actually see what I'm doing, which is a very, very, very good thing to do. So these right here are called punch outs and you can see these are inside the outlet box and they literally are punch outs. So you go and you put a, uh, something like a chisel or a screwdriver here and you bang it with a hammer and then they punch out and that's how you take them out. So if you're stressed out, and you need to take some aggressions out on something, it's great to punch one of these out. That's a really good time to do it. And that's pretty much where I am right now, is from trying to figure out what I wanna do and changing my mind over and over and over again, it, uh, it ends up being a problem. What I'm gonna do with this one is I am gonna bring the wires that are currently going over the the sink and I'm going to tie into that same circuit so that I can put this outlet in line with that circuit so that there's a place to plug in the refrigerator back there. So in trying to figure out which punch outs I need, 
I don't know if I need... I should probably have two, right? But both of them will need to be on the same side. So, I'm going to punch out a second one. And if you see, they come out fairly easily. And once you punch them out, then you just wiggle them back and forth, almost like when you were a kid, and wiggle the loose tooth, and they come loose. Sometimes they require a little more than others, but they're pretty easy. And then you have these little discs that I'm sure someone somewhere will find a, a use for. I don't know if I will, but I'm going to set them off to the side just in case. So now I have these two openings so I can wire in to this outlet box. So in order to get this Romex started, you go with a razor knife through the middle and that should allow you to open it up and I'm trying not to be I'm trying to show you on camera and it's hard because I've got two hands and if you notice when you open it up there's this paper here and that is on the ground wire because it's bare copper so I'm just gonna cut this right here And I'll show you a little bit better. See, so there's a white wire, there is a black wire, and there is a paper covered wire. And the paper is just insulation around the bare copper ground wire. So I am going to cut this back just a little bit more. And uh, and then I'm gonna bring it over to where the, I'm gonna do both sides of this little stretch of wire. And then I am going to bring it over and we're gonna wire in the, uh, the first outlet. All right, so this is the wire strippers, and we are going in to the 14. So we have 22, 18, 16, 14. And if you notice, as the numbers get bigger, the wire gets smaller, which is kind of counterintuitive. Once the ends are stripped, they will look like this. So I just realized this wasn't filming when I did it, but if you can see, that white wire is in there. And you basically, you need to shove them in there and shove them in there really good. And then they, uh, they will seat themselves and make a really good connection. So, now the black one is in. So once you get both of these in, and you've got a good connection on both of them, then you've got to take this other wire, the bare copper wire, and you are going to wrap it around this green screw over here. And it's not gonna go on as easy as you would expect because it is a heavy duty wire. So you're gonna wanna use pliers to make it work. And sometimes it's helpful if you turn it before you put it in there. So I'm gonna turn this around and make that curve in it. And then I am attaching it and see how it's made a circle around that. Then you just gotta make sure it's tight. And see 
see how that's a really good loop around there? I don't know if you can see. And then you're going to screw that down to make sure it's tight. And then to avoid any other problems, you are going to screw down all of these screws on the sides. And you just screw them all the way in so you don't have any chance of something causing a problem down the road. So it's a safety thing. And then do the ones on the other side. And once that's all done, we'll bring it over to the outlet box and we will tie this into the circuit. Here's the, uh, here's the outlet. And here's the outlet box. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to run these right through that hole that we made earlier. And then this will be able to screw right into the box. And then if we want to, we can add more to it so that we have more, more outlets or more whatever we need. So I might eventually want to have an additional plug like over the, over the counter in the kitchen. And this would allow me, if I wanted to, I could add to this and then just run a line and bring it over to the kitchen, which is something I might do in the future, but right now I don't really need it. I have an outlet in the, the light fixture in the kitchen and I can also tie into that and run down from that to an outlet if I wanted to do that in the kitchen. So I would probably end up opting for that rather than running straight from here. It's less wire and less running through walls. So it just seems like it makes more sense. All right, so that is there. So what we can do is we just put this plate on. And we have an outlet. Obviously, it's not usable yet because we don't have it tied into the power yet, do we? So that comes next. So this right here, let me move this over. This right here is called the junction box. The power comes in from the shore power inlet right here. It goes through the circuit here. And then when it comes out of the circuit, it gets fed through this wire right here and into this junction box. And from this junction box, it goes out through the camper. So I have one line that's going up into the ceiling and around to the kitchen. And then I have another line that's going down through the wall and going out to that far corner where we had the other light. So what I wanna do is I wanna tie, tie these wires directly into these so that we'll have an additional outlet to use. How we do that is we unhook what's there and we just tie these directly in just like, just like if you were attaching something. And what I wanna do is I wanna add two outlets here. So I am gonna tie both of them in at the same time because I'm going to add 
a second outlet down here. The one that I'm going to put right here is the one that I am going to use for that, um, that charging station that I showed you earlier. So let me go get that hooked up. So as you can see, I've added the second outlet right here. So now I have two more outlets and then the original two that are up here. And now these need to be wired in with these wires here. All right, so let's wire these in. These are the blacks on this one. These are the whites on this one. And this is the green, which would match up to the copper here. And so, let me get rid of this paper from inside this one. And I am going to run the wires and then figure out how to fish the whole thing in. So first we have to unscrew the existing ones. So there's already three black wires there. All right, so we will bundle all the blacks together. Now all the black wires are in one little bundle and then we will screw those all together. Now we will do the same thing. We'll do the same thing with the white. If I can get this loose, we will do the same thing with the white. Oh, wow, it's in there tight. There it comes. All right, let's try that again. We'll start with the white one. Three red wire nuts to use. Let's see if we can get this to work now. We're starting with the white wires. I wish there was room to get these in here. These are punch outs. So the camera stopped running for some reason, but I got these all wired in, and now I am closing up all of them with electrical tape just to make sure they all stay secure and uh, nothing touches anything. Because I'd rather be safe than sorry, especially with electricity. So I am securing all of them very, very well. I'm probably gonna regret this if I ever have to take this apart, but that's all right. I'd rather have it this way. All right, now 
We get to try to squeeze all this back into the junction box. Then I can get the cover back on. If I can find the cover. So this, this will end up covering all that. And these are just going to end up being underneath that wooden cover. That's just how it's going to have to be. Now I need to find the screws I took out this morning so that I can reattach all of this stuff. This piece of wood was over here so that it finished it off kind of pretty. have this all all set up now the junction box is now wired in and closed up and I'm trying to get this cover to go back on but as you can see now that we have these two wires that are fishing in there it's not gonna fit the same as it did before because it's not going to be flush against that now screwed in and now the moment of truth happens I am gonna go outside and I am going to plug this camper in and we will see what happens okay the camper is now plugged in now let's see what happens I obviously have the breaker off right now and I am about to turn it on and look we have light here we have light up here we are in business so here I have cut a hole in the wall and it's the size of the base of this charging station I will install right here see how it sits nice and flush against the wall that's going to be so handy and convenient and I'll be able to charge cell phones and all of that right here at this charging station I have accomplished things today and the cord will run through this little closet. See, this is the back of it. And it'll go through this little hole. And when it does, 
on the other side it'll come up to the closet and it will be able to be plugged in right up here into our new socket and if you notice over here see that green light that means we're in business so now I just got to clean up everything here and then I've got to screw this into the wall and that will be a new fixture. And then in here in the closet, I am just going to tidy up the cord and wrap it up against the wall so that it'll be nice and neat. Okay, so that's today's episode of Tiny Home Simple Life. Stay tuned and there will be more episodes because there is so much more work to do in this camper. So please hit like hit subscribe, help me build my channel, and I hope to see you soon. Please comment below if you have any ideas or tips or tricks you want to share with me.